Psalm 22 this morning. We just toured in Israel. It was wonderful. And this is one of King David's Psalms. And it's all about worshiping. I was glad when the people said, let us go and enter the house of the Lord. Feet shall stand in the gates of Jerusalem. There's no how mighty thou art built together. And other tribes are gathered here, the tribes of the world, into the testimony of Israel. Thrones of judgment, thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That people shall prosper. They that love Jerusalem. Their peace is forevermore. shall prosper. And our brethren and the people here we love to worship the Lord. I will now say peace is in me. Because of the house of the Lord and our God. I will seek thy goodness. And I was thinking, I was praying for God's leading on this message today, and I was reading about Peter, and it just struck me, I was thinking about how much his life, the lessons apply to myself, and I'm hoping apply to you also, living in denial, or living in denial, a rejection of facts, like if you sweep and you start to get rid of things. So I was thinking, I was praying, Lord, please give me wisdom, and this is the lesson, that we should be sensitive. Now, it may not be an easy lesson for everyone, but I pray that you come to God's word with an open heart. Trust God, he is always the best, and I know he gave us lessons. So we'll go ahead and pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for everyone who is here today to worship you, to glorify you. I just pray that you would pour out the power of the Holy Spirit on me, that my signs would be clear, that it would be your words, Lord, that you would speak to hearts today, and that we would learn from what Peter has gone through, his experiences see the results, that we should be like him. I pray for a blessing in this worship service in Jesus' name. So I was reading uh, one article related to technology, and there's one radio station. One person was, I called up and was asking, and they said, you know, I heard that there was this new computer system that was spreading. You know, a lot more people are using it now. And the radio host said, people never like to learn new, new technology, right? This was in the early 1990s. And the person said, well, you know, I don't know. I think people are going to really fall in love with technology and, you know, be using it all the time. And that radio host denied that. He said, no way. No way. 20 years Later, same radio station, the same person who had interviewed with that tech guy called up, and the tech guy called up, and he said, do you remember 20 years ago where we were with technology? 
And the radio host said, you're right. You're right. I have a question for you. I'm curious. How many of you already have a cell phone? Raise your hand. How many of you have a cell phone? Do you have a cell phone? I have a cell phone. Okay, now, can you leave your phone in the car? Most people, they say, nope, gotta have my phone with me. Must, must have it. It has to be with me. I can't deny my phone. I can't reject that. I can't get rid of it, right? It's the same idea. You've got a relationship, you've got a connection, it's the same kind of concept. So we're starting with this concept of living in denial. Go ahead and open to Matthew chapter 26, verse 69 through 75. trying to figure out where that new skate came from. We went, oh, this is Pastor Vinny this morning. And that matches with, you know, the line falling into the ditch. Mm -hmm. And not following good day. So we'll go ahead and read these verses. It says, now Peter sat without the palace. Without meaning outside. So now Peter sat outside the palace where there's people coming and going in that area. So the palace is this building and there's like a courtyard area where people enter. There's merchants perhaps selling out of their homes or and there's probably houses in there as well. So Peter's sitting out there and he's thinking after Jesus was arrested. And Peter's sitting there and he's just thinking over everything that happened. And a damsel, a woman comes up to him saying, damsel meaning someone who's young, a young woman, young girl or young woman, either way, she comes up and she says to him, thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Verse 70, but he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the first time he denies Jesus. So what are you talking about? And he gets up and he moves to somewhere else. It says, and when he was gone out into the porch, another maid, meaning another servant girl, another woman comes up, saw him and said unto him, said unto them that were there, this fellow also was, was also with Jesus of Nazareth. This is the second person who's gone, wait, no, I know you. I've seen you. Verse 72, and again he denied with an oath. Saying, I do not know the man. I don't know that man. Now he's mad about it. He's getting frustrated. He's starting to get all fired up, get defensive, get sensitive about it. And he's starting to breathe a little bit of fire. Verse 73, and after a while came unto him, they that stood by. So now there's all these people kind of gathering and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Bereath meaning your accent, the way that you talk. It's revealing 
the area that you're from, the place where you came from. I can tell by the way you talk. Mm. Same concept, I mean, if I sign this way or sign that way, people will say, you know, where are you from? I'm from oh, well, the Midwest. I've got that style of gesture. You know, I'm from the Midwest. This is where I'm from. Now I grew up mainstream. That's what I learned. You know, then there's a different way of signing. And then later, you merge more with ASL. And you've got this signing. I got a hodgepodge of styles coming together, but you can tell. Verse 74, then he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And he's really fired up at this point. And he's speaking again. You can see the attitude, the increase of anger within him. It says, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And when he heard that, all that anger just disappeared, and he remembered Jesus coming to him and saying, you will deny me. You will deny my name. Three times, the cock will crow, and then you know, that'll be the sign to you. And in a way, I'll never deny you. And now, he finds himself in this spot. And verse 75 says, And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. down on his knees just grieved, right? And, and in, in search of that something, and he started, started here with the L's, Peter's loyalty, his language, his learning, his location. That all applies to us, to you and to me as well. To our loyalty to Jesus Christ. After I ask Jesus Christ to come in my heart to be my personal Savior, after I am saved, I received Him. You know, and then I go out the way that I talk. I've got that loyalty through salvation. I've got that language. I'm not ashamed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. To speak and I shared the gospel with students in my high school. I saw people get saved. You know, I told them that I was saved, how excited I was, the joy that I had. And of course, I was learning. And I was starting to look at the world around me in a different way and say, well, you're not saved, and I am saved, and you know, just sharing this with other people and figuring out where I was and then the location. Many years later, you know, as I was following this, this motivation that I had and the motivation would kind of fall off and I just did this bouncing back and forth between like really excited to read the Bible and really excited to pray and come before the Lord and People would say, do you want me to help you soul winning? And I'd say, sure. And I'd kind of bounce back and come up with excuses and, you know, not really practicing what I was supposed to be practicing, what I was supposed to be learning. So it was like two different locations there. You know, I'd rather sleep in instead of getting up and going to worship God. Uh, uh, I mean, I love reading history and different stories and articles, fantasy, science, you know, whatever the subject is. I spend all this time over here reading and so much less time reading the scriptures. I love hanging out with my friends, and, you know, but I don't really share the gospel with them as opposed to being involved in sharing the gospel and, and visitation and soul and it. Which location are you in? Now this side over here, the following Lord is more bold, more dedicated, more willing 
to go and worship, to share the good news with other people. This side over here, not reading the Bible, not, not praying, not sharing. That's our location. That location over there of not doing shows our fear. And it starts with the denial of Jesus Christ. Not sharing with other people. Or, you know, I go to the mall and I met somebody and I said, wow, you're deaf and I'm deaf and this is great. And we start talking back and forth and we like, oh, should let them know about the gospel. And instead, oh, you're from Gallaudet, oh, where are you from? Oh, this college, oh, that college, oh, where do you work at now? And, you know, you're running through all this stuff, you're learning, but you're not sharing the gospel. You don't have that mindset. That's all fear. And that starts with denying Jesus. It shows the sin that we're harboring in our lives. And when we are close with Christ, that comes out. When we're withholding our relationship with Christ, when we're refusing to share it with people, that's a denial of Jesus, a denial of the Savior. starts with having a close relationship with him. It's the same thing. I love my wife. Until death do us part, I love my wife. I love Jesus Christ more than I love myself. Do you love Jesus Christ more than yourself? Do you love Jesus Christ more than your spouse? If yes, what are we talking about him? If not, are you putting your marriage before Jesus Christ? Because it ought to be the other way. Jesus first. And your relationship with Jesus Christ shows as you're close with him, it overflows your heart as you're in his word. It overflows your speech. You start to let people know what you've taken in. At work, I have people that come up and they say, I notice you're different. You're different than other Christians. And I say, all right, what did you notice? How many of your workers, your co-workers, have noticed that you're different than others? If not, because you deny Jesus. Because you don't want to talk about him. You don't want to show your walk with maybe selfishness. Perhaps you're ashamed, so you're keeping silence, and you won't surrender. You, you've surrendered to the world instead of surrendering to Jesus Christ. People will come up if you don't deny Jesus Christ. They will come up and say, you know, do, do you mind helping me out with this situation or that situation? There's something different about you. You know, and I share with them, and then I say, but it's really up to you to, to be close with the Lord, to have that relationship with Him. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. Matthew chapter 10, verse 33 says, but whosoever, that means anyone, whosoever shall deny me before men, him also will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. So we deny Jesus Christ, and Jesus looks to God and says, should I deny him? <laughs> I notice people put on a trauma as they talk to the hand, right? They put their hand out in front of them. I've had people do that before, shove their hand in my face, and I'm just like, really? Seriously? Because I, I, can, I can't really see around that. <laughs> I'll never forget, there's a famous boxer. Muhammad Ali, right? A famous fighter. He got in an airplane. He's flying along. 
And he was stubborn. He just kept taking his seatbelt off and sitting there. And they were getting ready to arrive. You know, they're descending, and the seatbelt comes on. They make the announcement, please put your seatbelt on. We will be landing soon. And they've got the little light going. you got to put your seatbelt on. So the flight attendant didn't know who he was. Who is, who is that, Ali? I don't know. So came over and said, sir, sir, would you please put your seatbelt on? And Ali won't even make eye contact with her. Just straight up ignored her. Looking around, just wouldn't even give heed at all. And so she, she got him on the shoulder. And he, as soon as she tapped him, he said, do you know who I am? And she said, no, I, I don't know who you are, but I, I mean, I can show you if you need help, but you need to put your seatbelt on. And again, he was so stubborn. I'm not even going to do that. And the flight attendant went, and she went up to the co-pilot. And she said, do, do you know who Ali is? Oh, yeah, 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 that's the boxer. And the flight attendant said, well, he won't put his seatbelt on. And the co-pilot said, well, tell him that he has to put his seatbelt on now. And so the flight attendant, here she goes back again. And she says, very boldly to him, okay, but in a nice way, you know, she throws it out there, you need to put your seatbelt on and you need to do it now. And he got up and started arguing with her. He said, Superman doesn't need a seatbelt. And the flight attendant said back to him, Excuse me, Superman does not need a seatbelt, but he doesn't need an airplane either. Now sit down and put your seatbelt on. And after that, he got real quiet and he sat down in his seat and he put his seatbelt on. Wow, what an ego that Ali had. And we have such an ego just like that. We think ourselves so big when we deny Jesus. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Why do we tell? Jesus. Why do we do that? Because of our fear. It's because of our fear. That's number one. I mean, number one, we're afraid of embarrassment. Number two, we might be afraid of abuse. Number three, I really want to keep my position at work, my status among these people. Number four, do you have many worldly friends? Number five, are we focused on social networking and you know, being, being all in the know at the moment? Now, which is what Pastor was talking about. He's talking about different things, and I'm going, wow, I didn't even realize that I knew those things. You know, is that what we're focusing on? Knowledge of the world? It's a denial of Jesus Christ. And when you recognize those areas in your lives that are causing you to deny Jesus Christ, you better get out of them. The gospel ought to be our main focus. We just had um, a former member here whose daughter passed away, and they said, pray for our comfort. Well, how do we pray for your comfort if you haven't repented yet? How can God comfort you if you're so in, in a terrible relationship with him, with Jesus Christ? You know, pray for their repentance, not for their comfort.
neighbors, business managers, you know, I really want that promotion. What's your focus? Fear is just an emotion. Our emotion ought to be joy. We ought to have that joy with Jesus Christ. And recognize we can't afford to deny Jesus Christ. Don't let sin influence you and get stronger and stronger in your life and pull you down into that denial of sin. I'll go ahead and sign these two verses. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twelve. It says if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That's why we emphasize, you know, the relationship. We share the relationship of marriage as a picture. You know, we see divorce now. Even though people are Christians, there's still this high percentage, just like the world, of divorce. What's going on? This starts with the denial of Jesus. First John chapter 2, verse 22 and 23. Jesus knows our weakness. He knows the weakness of the world. We either need to forget the quote unquote power of the world or we're denying Jesus. And the hold of the world, the love of the world is so powerful. It grips us up, it gets us. Jesus is the ruler. Mm-hmm. You, know, you live here, you have your home, you have your job, technology, right? The problem is that we stop sharing with other people in the world. We stop sharing about Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Uh, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. <laughs> we ought to be running after him. And this cross is overweight, right? That we can't bear. It. We say, oh no, I, I can't. I can't do that. It's heavy. Lord, your cross is heavy. And we say, fine, you know, I'll, 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 I'll bear with it. Does it matter if it breaks? I'll take up that cross and I'll follow you wherever you go. You need to keep going. Buckle down. Keep going. We tend to go and we we pick up the cross, right? And we follow Jesus. Is that what we normally do? (coughs) Same idea. Who loves to be involved in sports? Who loves sports? Watching them, playing them. Sometimes, I mean, it's hard, right? In try in workouts, you gotta run laps. If you see somebody who's just walking, well, the coach likes me. It's cool. 
I'll just walk. You won't pick me off the team. Everybody else is out there, like, sweating and, and dying, running laps around the track, and here you are just walking, and the coach says, no, no, it's, it's fine. Just leave them. Would that ever happen? Would that ever happen? But Christians, how often do we deny ourselves and deny the world? Jesus says, come after me. Come follow me. And I'll be with you. Follow me. Take up your cross. Take up this book. Twenty four seven. God tells you what to do with your life through His Word. How many times have you denied Jesus Christ? This is a picture. In His sacrifice, He is separate from sin. And he's stand, standing for the Lord. Just as Jesus stood with God, we ought to have God's word hidden in our heart that we're thinking on his sacrifice throughout the day. That, that you know, we, we go to people and they come to us and they say something and we go, you know what, that's just not right according to God's word. I can I have found that in God's word. Here's what the Bible says about what you're doing, and I can't be part of that. This is what it means to believe in, in God, to believe in Jesus Christ, to have his word hidden in us. But so many of us cast aside his word and go and fall in with whatever's going on around us. And we need to be convicted by his word, to hold to it, to have that sand. It is chapter 2, verse 12. And here it says teaching us teaching us that's God's word teaching us that denying ungodliness denying it and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and having our mind on him and godly in our practice in this present world, in this life that we have here on earth we ought to push aside lay aside all the attractions of the world and be as close to Jesus as we can that we can spread his light, that we can be salt of the earth. Denial of the sinner. As you meet with people out in society, out in the world today, as you are interacting on Facebook, I will never forget one person let me know. They said, if you had, if you have Facebook, you have over 300 friends, it means that you're a hypocrite. And I went, what? It's true. <laughs> if you have over 300 friends on Facebook, you're going to call me a hypocrite? Mm -hmm. I started thinking about it, and I went, you know what? You're right. Because that just means that you're, you're being friends with everybody you can. Oh, good. And now we're in this big, happy group. I don't have time to meet over 300 people on Facebook. I don't have time to fellow. I mean, am I going to be on there all day, all night, all day, all night, all night, all night? I'm just not going to sleep ever so that I can minister to 300 people on Facebook. So, you know, I limit it down to who I know, to who I can be in touch with, and who I can contact. 300 people, how do I be an influencer? <laughs> Christians, how many of us are hypocrites? This guy, to my face, called me a hypocrite. I said, wait a second. And I remember a while back, more than, I would say maybe eight to 10 years ago, I went to Gallaudet 
And I was meeting with people. I was out, you know, on visitation, sharing the gospel with people. And I was witnessing to one deaf student that was there. And, you know, we were chatting back and forth. And I saw a guy. You know, look, looks like a pretty buff guy. And so I'm chatting with him. And, you know, I said, I'll let the word spread. Because, you know, we're, I'm sharing the gospel. It's his word. So, you know, I'm explaining the gospel. And I know that this guy can see me. And right away, this guy comes up right up to me and he says you hypocrite and I went whoa I mean just in the middle of my conversation called me a hypocrite so I'm a, you're not even saved I said wait wait, wait, wait. what do you mean the person who wasn't saved went, wait, wait 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 what do you mean they're a hypocrite what do you mean so now I'm like navigating the situation and I said why did you call me a hypocrite and the guy says you, you've got this, you know, standard set up, and that's what you're here for, and you just want to pass down your rules to everybody. And I said, no, 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 I'm just, I just want to meet people and share the good news about Jesus Christ. It's not about me. I am not Todd 316. That's the book of John. He said, well, here you are, you know, sounding like you're so smart. And I was just like, wait a second. And then, of course, you know, everybody takes notice. And now we got a crowd. I said, what do I do? So I wrote down my name, my text number. I said, please contact me if you need anything. And I took my Bible and I left. And I'm thinking about it. And he said, man, came up and called me a hypocrite. Am I? That broke my heart. That person that I was there sharing the gospel with missed this wonderful news that broke my heart. Denial of the sinner. When you prepare to go out soul winning, you need to pray with his power, his leading, that you'd be able to reach out to other people. You know, because sometimes people will throw stuff at you, and sometimes you fall into it, and now all of a sudden you're trapped in this sin. You know, you're, you're stuck with all this heaviness. I've broken that. We need to stand on the rock and say, forgive me. I want to get back with you. The best way, come to worship here. Read God's word. Come here and worship. You can hear God's word. Let the Holy Spirit work in your heart to repent, to change. Come before the Lord and say, please forgive me. You know, if you've got family problems, if you've had this big fallout with your spouse, you need to go to say, please forgive me. This is the same thing in our relationship with God that we need to kneel before him and confess to God. And when that happened, when Peter did that, he knelt down, he repented before God. 3,000 people got saved. 3,000 people repented at the hearing of God's word. You know, Peter broke through that that veil of separation between him and the Lord as soon as he repented and the power of God was able to be poured out on him and you see the Lord's leading in his life from that point on. Titus chapter 1 verse 16 says they profess that they know God but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and that's every good work reprobate that's Titus 1 16 I'm reading this in reverse he just did 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5 2 Timothy 3 5 says and if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not found except he strive lawfully. Titus 1.16. And then our last verse that we have for today, which you don't need to flip to, but it's Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Not 
everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name hath done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. People say, you know, but I'm so good. I'm here at church. I even showed up on time. It depends on you. First, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? That's first. And if you have, are you denying Jesus Christ? And if you're denying Jesus Christ, you got to ask yourself, what did you trust him as your Savior in the first place for? That's a, a blatant contradiction to accept Jesus Christ and then deny him. I've got faith in you and your blood that cleansed me and you died on the cross. And that joy that overwhelms us from salvation ought to cause us to run around the room telling people, proclaiming our salvation to others. If we look at ourselves today and we recognize that we've been in denial of Jesus Christ, we ought to love him. Go ahead and pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word that's able to speak to our hearts. I beg you, Lord, that you would touch hearts this morning. Within my heart, in my mind, that we meditate and we recognize these things that we've done in denying you so often. And Lord, first, you already know our sin. We have to remember that. You are aware. And that sin can be stopped. We need to separate ourselves from those things that are sinful, that have brought sin into our lives, that we've allowed in our lives and focus on you. We need to repent. We have an altar wide open, an invitation time, and I pray that if you've spoken to anyone's heart, that they would come forward. If there's anyone here today who hasn't trusted you as their Savior, they don't know for sure that they'll get to heaven. They're still sitting there thinking to themselves, I don't really know. I pray that they would come forward, that they would allow us the opportunity to share that good news with them. And I pray, Lord, that you would remind us, help us to remember that you can resolve all the conflict and all the problems in our lives. That you would remind them that there's people here who are willing to sit down and help to counsel, to help them be and stay on the right path with you. Thank you, Lord.